I was just saying before I hit record, I was I was yeah. glad that you were open to jumping on tonight because yeah. it was a, a bit of a a bit of a not last minute. I messaged you yesterday, but I thought, oh, he's a busy yeah. man. He's he's got plenty <laughs> going on. I'm sure a Friday we evening. Yeah, I'm sure a Friday <laughs> evening has uh, many plans that don't involve a podcast, but. But thanks for yeah. taking the time to come on, no, and I thought it would welcome. be a um, a really good chance for us just to catch up and introduce you essentially to to the audience because you actually um, like we've only recently started working together. Obviously, I think our first phone call was I was standing in the the maternity ward at the hospital because yeah, my little man had just been yeah, born so about right. a month ago. Yeah. Um, but mate, okay. I thought as a as a little introduction, just so people can get to know you a little bit, if you could yep. just paint a bit of a picture about you know, the last couple of last couple of years that you're experiencing in the running world. So obviously yep. you've told me, but it might yeah, be nice yeah. for uh, people to get a bit of a feel for you. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a weird one. I'm I'm definitely no athlete. I'm a hobbyist at best. Um but yeah, the last couple of years for me have been a bit of a struggle. I've been dealing big time injury, so three bulging discs in the spine and one of them was pushing down on a nerve, which was creating all kinds of chaos. Um so, yeah, leading up to that, I kind of had niggles in the back and I've had little injuries here and there. Um, and I was running at marathon distance as a, as a bit of fun, I guess you'd call it. And, yeah, sort of mid, mid last year, I got 1K into a run and it all just, it all just went on me and I just sort of dropped to the knee, um, which was quite humbling, down the bottom of my heel. So I had to hobble back up and then, um, yeah, it's been a, a bit of a long journey. So I've been through, yeah, huge amounts of physio and rebuilding the whole body and, now I've got the all clear to start running, so that's when I sought you out. I was like, I think I need a, I need a, I need an expert to help me through, help me keep accountable, because um, I didn't want to rush back into it. That's the one thing I've definitely learned this time around is the, the taking your time, building up that consistency, and just not rushing things. So, yeah, hoping you can help me out a bit there. It'd be a good little journey to go on. So. Yeah, sure. I yeah. think what, what I love, and I'm, I'm working with another guy called David who lives in yeah. Victoria as well. Yeah. And one thing I love about Dave is is similar to you. He's, he's got a bit of a long-term vision. And what I was excited about with your story was you contacted me when you were pretty much, like you've been back running a, a few times a week for the last yeah. couple of weeks. And obviously we're gradually just building up that, that midweek yeah. longer run to yeah. about six to eight a. But yeah. what I liked about the initial phone call was you were like, all right, my main goal, ideally, I would love to target Melbourne Marathon next year. And it was yeah, a, it's a long goal. months away. And yeah. what I love about that is, especially you said that you're a, a hobby athlete. We'll get back into that in a minute because you yeah. put some times on the board, which I'm going to suggest, <laughs> uh, you know, potentially a bit more than a hobby athlete, uh, at least as a foundation. But yeah, yeah. I, um, I, think, uh, I think one of the interesting things that you've already nailed, like from your perspective, is you've got that longer term vision in, in, in yeah. check. And so many athletes, especially new athletes, men fall into the trap of going, all right, well, um, if I can run six days a week for as long as I can, then I'll be really, really fast. And, and don't yeah. take into consideration the fact yeah. that obviously um, not only your body's inability to absorb such heavy workloads, but just the fatigue that comes with that, especially when you're new, can be really dis disheartening. So I was excited from from sort of that perspective. And that was one of the, the big reasons that made me jump at working with you. I yeah. touched on it a moment ago. You said you're a... Yeah relatively new relatively hobby runner but tell everyone yeah, yeah. what you run for, for a marathon before you are uh... so my second marathon um and you would actually have a fit if you heard my training leading like that what i used to do for training um but yeah three hours 28 was my second ever marathon and that was melbourne so my first one i did the great ocean road so it was 45 that was my first marathon so um and i did that just solely to complete it and then i got the itch and um yeah, I just went hammer and tong at three. Yeah, I got three twenty eight. Was the best one I've got. So. Man, I, I can guarantee. I can tell you for <laughs> a fact that there are there are hundreds of listeners right now who have uh, who, who who they like you less having heard that than what they <laughs> Sorry, <guys. laughs> than what they did before. Because I'll win you uh, back. <laughs> yeah, what I what I thought and what was uh, is sort of exciting to me was as I said as a foundation, uh, yeah. and we'll talk about the training that you were doing leading into that. I think yeah. it's it's an incredible prospect in terms of what you're capable of because. Uh, to, to call yourself, you know, what you called yourself, more of a hobby runner and then come out and say, okay, well, I've actually run 328. Suggest there's a fair bit of talent to work with, but obviously trying to navigate that that world of injury has been a, a frustrating part for you. So yeah. give us a bit of a give us a bit of an overview of uh, of sort of what that, that rehabilitation process has looked like. Because yeah. obviously from being at the bottom of that hill to 
where you are now, there's been a few big steps taken or a lot of small steps maybe yeah, uh, real small. taken in between that. <laughs> Mostly on my back, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was probably, it was August last year where it really kind of hit the wall. Um, I'm going to name drop, but I don't know if you know the comedian Tim Minchin. I think everyone does, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he put the call out. He was doing a tour and um, he put a call out just to go and run a couple of laps of the TAM with him. So a bunch of people went. And I wasn't quite at that level because I'd sort of been in and out of a bit of a niggle here and there. So I went and did the run with him and then I felt all right, but kind of a couple of weeks later, I, that niggle got bigger and bigger. So it was about August um, and that dropped me really bad. So, yeah, three bulging discs. Um, and I kind of kind of just was resting it for most of the end of last year and it just wasn't getting better and I was doing what I knew sort of stretch rehab strengthening on good days but pretty much running stopped and then it was like January this year where I started to I was trying to come upstairs because we live in a two-story house and um, I had to grab the railing and kind of push off the railing because I just had no power left thought I better go see someone about this so I booked in with a physio and pretty soon they'd laid out a 15-week treatment plan so it was about once a week for a month i'd go in and get kind of manual work done on my back and some like flexibility stuff and then after a month i was allowed to start loading the back again so real light gym stuff for four weeks before that was all mobility and um twice twice a day mobility about 45 minute sessions each day or each each session twice a day and then yeah slowly but surely just after that 15 week cycle they kind of put me on a strength and conditioning um, program so I got eight weeks in and then started the second eight-week block which I'm kind of halfway through now and that's when I gave you a call I was like I'm ready to go physio yeah. gave me the all clear to run sort of he said go out and go for about three and then call me and let me know how you went and I was relatively pain-free so that's when the all clear was like all right we can start building up now and doing it real slow real really really basic but um yeah it's been so good that yeah. first like 6k run I did the other week under your program, it was like I felt like I'd run 50Ks, not physically, but like just emotionally. I was like, oh, this is this is a big step. So it was pretty good. Yeah. It's only 6Ks, and I know I shouldn't say that, but I'm, I'm used to trying to bang out heaps. So no, it I get step. it. I yeah. get it, man. It's uh, I've, I've been in those situations plenty of times. Um, like whether it was like, – especially when I was younger. I that, yeah. My biggest injury when it was when I was about 16 – and I, it was one of the most valuable sort of learning experiences to me because actually I was 15 and I, I got a stress fracture in my lower back and I was just a classic 16-year-old kid from the country who was like, all right, I'm going to be the best, so I'm just going to train more than everyone. And I wasn't thinking about surfaces. I wasn't thinking about intensity. I was just thinking about maintaining it. And pretty quickly I you know, I, you know, I got in some, some trouble with, uh, with some lower back pain and uh, got the x-ray at Melbourne Sport and Spine. They said, hey, look, here's what's going on. And as a result, it was, I think it was six weeks, pretty much on a bike, yeah. just no yeah. weight bearing activities really. And I fully relate to what you mean, being able to come yeah. back. And I think I started with like a 1K run and I finished right. that 1K it run. Oh, it was torture, <laughs> but it was also one of the most glorious welcome yeah. backs to, yeah. to running for the same reason that you said, because it's yeah. just it's just a classic. You don't know what you got till it's gone, isn't it? It's so yeah, nice absolutely. to be able to just get back out there and and get a bit of a feel for it. But with yeah. the with the bulging discs, I'm assuming yeah. there's a, a fair bit of shootout pain with that as well because obviously the, the back's an interesting one. There's so many nerves and stuff shooting off the spine yeah, yeah. that it's probably not just a localised pain, is it? No, nah, so the like the main actually, like, so it's real down low at, the back, at my back um, and it kind of shoots, pretty much shoots straight out the middle of the spine and then wraps around the back of the hips to the front of the hips. So it actually it rattles all the way down the hamstring, down the hip flexors and um, on, a, on a bad moment a bad twist i can say i can feel it because there's there's a residual nerve pain and it'll be there for a long long time um so that's we're just mainly about on a bad day it's just calming the nerve pain down but the actual structure is pretty good now which is like it's yeah, it's strong so um up and up so i can i can push through the pain when i know i'm not doing damage mm-hmm. um when i know it's just nerve and i've just kind of got to start processing that differently now so yeah, so the, um, you, you still feel a little bit of the pain, but what the process yeah. of thought is, is different, you're saying? Yeah, so my physio is like, actually, when you feel that pain, that's just your body memory effectively. So it's just trying to protect you. Like the structure is actually fine now, but your nerve is kind of still firing at that pain because it used to be genuinely in pain. So now it's kind of neurological, I guess. So, yeah, we're just going to – the more I go to the gym, the heavier I can lift the more I'm trusting my body again. And um, the further I run, there's, I'm just building trust in myself and my body again, which is 
helping a lot. So the nerve pain's disappearing very slowly, but it's it's progressing. It's good. Interesting, yeah. man. So yeah. what kind of steps has he got? Did he did he sort of point you in the direction? Because I know uh, neurological things are yeah. interesting because there's so many handy tips out there, but in terms really. of knowing which particular tool is the most yeah. effective for what it is you're dealing with is is maybe a little overwhelming if you're brand new to that. So have you have you sort of been doing any particular processes there to help you navigate the discomfort when you feel it? Yeah, he's. Well, I've been doing sort of dry needling with him. So he's been prodding away at it that way and that's kind of just to – just to awaken it and move it and freshen it up and kind of break down all that. It's just, it's a lot, it's like a, it's like someone's put a metal rod in there, you know, just something just sitting there that's, it's actually not there. Cause when he massages or when he hits it with the needles, it's fine. There's nothing, no pain or anything like that. So it's, it's a bit of that. It's just about training my body to kind of trust itself again. So all those stabilizers that are grabbing and spasming, they're just used to doing it to protect me. And they don't have to. So it's just retraining them through mobility movements, strength training, back running now so that the more I'm running, it's just sort of training the body to move the way it used to and, and comfortably. So it's just about getting over those hurdles real slow, um, not expecting it to disappear overnight. And, uh, yeah, just mobility, stretching, massage, the whole gamut. They're throwing everything at me at the moment and I'm listening to them because they're saving me. That's awesome. Yeah. So at the moment, it's expensive, so doing, though. I wouldn't I recommend can imagine, it. <laughs> I can imagine that's true. When you were when yeah. you were saying about the weekly physio visits, I was like, yeah. I remember those days, and I remember it was yeah. much nicer when I was living at home and didn't have a job because it fell in my mum's yeah. concern basket. But uh, yeah, <laughs> whenever it's yeah. me now, I, uh, I definitely sympathise. Yeah. So so at the moment, you so you said you're doing a lot of the strength, stretching, mobility. You're doing yeah. the runs three days a week. So on the off yeah. days, um, yeah. what does your sort of training situation look like there? So, yeah, I tend to go, I'll go gym one morning and then run the next. So we do go on off and on and then Sunday is my complete rest day. Um, the nice easy runs are really nice. Like they're nice on the body. Um, I wake up the next morning feeling fresh as a daisy. So I've got kind of a few days of load in a row and then a complete rest Sunday. But every night is a full mobility routine and stretch and then like self-massage or you know get on the roller and the stre- like the pressure ball and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the physio wants me to kind of go to my regular routine that I used to do. So it's about six days of the week with a rest, but they're all morning. So you get a fair chunk of rest at the end of the day. Once you've done it, get out of the way. It's good. Yeah, that's not. Sorry, how long did you say the whole process is? For which? The, the sort of strength and conditioning, mobility stuff. Did you say they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're structured into one session or, or are you alternating yeah, those? So it's, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday is my strength training in the morning. And then I do a mobility stretch every night. So oh, seven okay, days sorry. yeah, you said, yeah, yeah. So that's split. So that's kind of rest recovery, but it's it's actually really quite nice. The body appreciates it at the end of the day. Yeah, you're in it's, running around with the kids and whatnot. So it's good. Yeah, man, I can imagine that's true. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know if you've seen Ali Kipchoge recently released, or well, he didn't release it. It was called Breaking Two, and I it was it a, with great interest. <laughs> how, so one of the things that stood out to me, and it's an area that honestly I'm such a massive proponent of now. Like you only have to listen to a couple of episodes of the the podcast to, to hear who I've had on there speaking about pain and navigating injury and mobility. And cause it's just such an overlooked element of, of running training. And the fact that for better or worse, obviously the, um, the frustration of the bulging disc has, has led you to start taking these steps. I reckon developing such a solid routine there is, is just going to pay massive dividends to the running because obviously not only for the back pain, but just for, for stability. And um, yep. later on when we start getting into a little bit of technique stuff, it's, um, I, I think it's a huge advantage and, and, and one that's so overlooked by so many runners. And the reason I brought up the, the Breaking 2 documentary, I, I'm assuming I'm telling you it's the right one, but it's the one where it shows a lot of the strength, conditioning, mobility that Elliot and the, the Kenyans yeah, do. Guys. Yeah. I, I yeah. had no idea how, how big a part of their, uh, their running training program that stuff was, which was really inspiring. And I, I've sort of rubbed shoulders with a lot of Australian top runners and, even amongst those top runners, there's been there's been a couple here and there who have had a really solid program in that area. So um, I've just turned into a massive preacher of, of that kind of thing. So it's <laughs> nice to it's nice to know that you've already um, you know yeah, you've got a solid yes. program and some solid guidance there. But one of the things I was curious to pick your brain about was just in regards to the the actual training structure that you had going yep. into your original like, marathons because you sort of uh, had a little, had a little <laughs> asterisk yeah. next to that statement of the training. And yeah. um, I guess just to uh, just to paint a picture of what that looked like, I was going to ask you to uh, give us a bit of yep. an overview of, 
of your old weekly structure yeah, and, right. and what it was about that you, you didn't necessarily trust or enjoy. Yeah, so like I I did I did a physical education degree at Ballarat University. So going into my own training, I had the theoretical like foundation. I knew what it took and all that sort of stuff, but and I was never really super into running. I was always like I played football. Uh, I think similar to yourself, sort of growing up playing footy, and then when sort of football petered out a bit, I just got the idea of this running idea and loved it. And I never really learnt about it. I just kind of went and played with it. Um, so I kind of ended up, you know, the first sort of serious run with a goal to run a marathon. I think I went out and I was like, oh, I'll just do three k's, whatever. And it nearly killed me because it was January and I'd hardly run and it felt like the worst thing ever. But quickly, like, I felt nice when I cooled down and I was like, oh, I'll go again tomorrow. I'll just do another three and then I'll have a day off and then I'll do three or whatever. And built up and it was pretty sporadic. It just whenever I could find time. Some days I'd sort of just finish work, run home, like get in the car, get home, chuck the runners on straight out the door, get as many Ks in as I possibly could. So it was just randomised morning, night. Saturday afternoon, Sunday before a, like a gig or a party or whatever. And then, yeah, some nights I've finished work and I'll be like, oh, I feel pretty energetic. I might just go and run 20 now. <laughs> um, and then the next day I'd just have a day off and then I'd run three and it was just nuts. Like it was, there was no structure. Um, there was a little, like still had gym routine, but again, just what I knew from my like, you know, sports ed background and stuff like that. So yeah, it was like chaos. Like if if a, you were looking at me running, you would have predicted all the pain that was coming my way <laughs> quite easily. <laughs> oh man, it's yeah. so it's so unfair when uh, when you <laughs> you sort of have someone who's been in the sport for a long time and has made yeah. so many of the own uh, the mistakes yeah. themselves. So they know it not only from a textbook, but they know it from uh, from the yeah. experience in their own life. So yeah, I know what you're saying. Did you say uh, you'd get out before a gig? Yeah, yeah. So for like. 10 years actually I still do it occasionally now but it was what well, like it pretty much paid my way through uni but I, yeah I'd cruise around pubs just doing, doing acoustic covers and stuff like that on the weekends and yeah you know playing uni nights and stuff so that was my job before teaching awesome um, so man yeah so that was again the lifestyle didn't really fit like I'd quite often a Wednesday night if I was playing a uni night I'd I'd finish work I'd run like 25 k's and then I'd go out and start a gig at 10, finish at 2, go home, wake up in the morning, go like go to work. So yeah. something had to give and it was my body. So, yeah. That's yeah, I get it, man. Obviously. I don't know. This is, a, this is probably another conversation for another day. I'm not sure yeah. if I've told you that yeah. I, uh, I know the open mic scene very well and some of the yeah, patrons because right. I, do, I do a lot of stand-up comedy outside yeah. of this. That's like my other big passion. Oh, yeah, so right. I've got an appreciation for exactly what you mean. I think we operate on uh, yeah. on very similar hours and, and yeah. with two kids running around the house here at the moment now, well, oh, yeah. one running around and the other one uh, slowly sleeping. learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just sleeping a lot. Um, yeah, some of those late nights are, are, are really uh, causing some pain in the early yeah. mornings. It's um, hard work. It is hard work, man, but no, that's, a, that's a smart move. So well, that was part of, the, part of the incentive to get away to something a little more solid in, in the teaching world, was it? Yeah, pretty well, yeah, it's sort of... Music, I think a lot of the things I'd go, I think teaching is the only thing I planned, to be honest. Everything else I just fall into. Like I just liked music, so I'd learn a guitar and then I did an open mic and then they got me back and paid me like 50 bucks in exposure um, and a couple of beers and then that just took off from that. And before I knew it, I was sort of doing three or four gigs a week, anywhere between like Warnable and um, Sydney. So it was like a lot of hours in cars and then you're running and you're jumping in a car again and, yeah, it's, it was chaos and then teaching full-time after that after a while so something kind of had to give in my back and body and yeah man yeah yeah, yeah no, so now yeah. music's taken the side step and i'm focusing on the body a little bit <laughs> yeah sweet so it's yeah. just uh, at the moment the two the two big i get well two of the big yeah, focuses is, the, big the, focus. is the teaching and, and the running yeah pretty much yeah yeah so it's awesome. a bit on the plate still but it's good yeah it's i was i was I was curious to uh, I was curious to ask you about um, what it was that actually made you even want to reach out in the first place. Just because there's, I, I guess there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast, and it, it's always interesting to hear the reasons about what it was that makes yep. someone reach out at a particular time. So obviously, you've said that yeah, there wasn't a whole heap of structure. You said that you got the tick of approval to get back out there, and you'd listen yep. to a couple of the podcasts. But uh, yep. at what point we're like, all right, I'll give uh, I'll give Ty some messages and see if there's any any chance we uh, we jump on board together. Um, I think like, well, when, when I heard, like you have mentioned a couple of times doing comedy and I was like, oh, well, I think the guy gets the lifestyle that I have led and yeah. that it might trickle into my life every now and then. So that was a good match. But then 
like you said, the name relaxed running that really struck a chord with me because it's kind of what I'm doing it for. It's to relax. Um, and I don't want to take it too seriously, but I also want to push myself. So um, that was a big one. But then, yeah, when you, you know, like anyone who listens to your podcast, like one of your core focus is consistency showing up day in, day out. And that's kind of the way I go about it um, with whatever I do. It's just show up and keep working and it'll, it'll eventually it'll crack and work for you um, mm. and not pushing it, not, you know, I've, I've, these are the lessons I've learned from multiple injuries, you know, that, and the back's only one of them, you know, the, the most serious, but there were, there have been many before and it's all because I wasn't showing up. I wasn't consistent. Um, and I was pushing too hard, trying to get results too quick. And um, yeah, so that, that whole idea of yours of just, you know, taking it easy, working with the long-term goal and trusting the process. That's a big belief of mine as well. So I figured they, the values matched. So I gave yeah. you a message and yeah. yeah. And away no, we went. No, that's awesome. It, it's interesting. You don't need to be in the running world to, to see how it works. Like I see yeah. that in the comedy world, you'd see that in the music world and anyone yeah. out there who's, who's achieved any level of uh, sort of efficiency at what they do would yeah. understand that so much of it. Okay. Yeah, sure. A part of it might be the, the talent that you come into it with, but I've known so many unreal runners who they've got the they've got the talent uh when it comes yeah. to speed and speed endurance but i've almost started to class the uh consistency element of running as a talent in itself because if you don't have that it's all good and well to brag about what you could have done or what you should have done or what you're capable of but unless you've yep. got that work ethic to just get up and do it again and you know take a whack as you have and and get up and just uh, build uh build that training program back more effectively you're never really going to get a good taste of it. So I think, yeah, as you, I think, I think I said it before I, I hit record that part of the beauty with the name Relax Running comes in to the podcast where we take random rabbit holes and. <laughs> but the take other a journey. Part, yeah, but the other part is exactly what uh, what you just mentioned, and that's yeah. the idea that it, it should be for relaxing for me. Yeah. Um, like a, a lot of the time, uh, a rest day or a recovery time or an hour away from the kids isn't just sitting in front of a TV. It's going out yeah. and just copping a bit of fresh air and turning the legs over. And for, for me, that really is probably the part of my life where I, I, I get recharged more Absolutely. than the gym or more than a yoga session or more than whatever it else it is that I'm doing. I just, I love that feeling of being out there. And um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that was something that sort of struck a chord with you. Cause I, yeah. I definitely, um, I definitely bang on about it a lot. I've almost started putting an apology before it. Oh, really? <laughs> the consistency. <laughs> yeah, because the regular listeners go, here, here no, he goes. No, every time you do it, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm preaching to myself as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. From a, a from sort of where you are now, as we've said a couple of times, that that three runs a week. Mm -hmm. Like, what is your headspace going forward? Are you the kind of bloke? Are you keen to keep it around three days? Would you like to build up to to six? Or uh, what do you see yourself doing in sort of twelve months' time? All all going yeah. well? Yeah. Look, I reckon um, like we were sort of talking earlier about sort of maybe running with a three through to December and. And then New Year, we kind of amp it up to four, even five runs a week would be ideal because then I'll probably go from three strength training sessions in the gym to two, mm -hmm. but keep my mobility routine and stuff like that because that's really paying dividends. Um, but once you get the strength where you want it to, it's easy to maintain that strength if, you, if you're putting in good gym sessions. Um, and then, yeah, just as we're building up, obviously prioritize the running. And then if I hit that that magic marker at the, mar at the marathon, then we can scale it back and I can focus on – back on the strength in the gym in the off season um, and just keep going, keep the K's going up. And then, yeah, just I want to be able to have that adaptability kind of flicking back and forth without having that, you know, that, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to flog the body in one area too much. So, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. stick three through to Christmas and then, yeah, go to four or five runs a week after that building up. Yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Well, I've said this to you before, but just for clarity to, to everyone yeah. listening, I think one of the things I, uh, I'm a big fan of is is just, as we've said, we'll, we'll build that foundation slowly, get you into like, a, I almost look at it like a boxer going into a fight. Yeah. You, you have a lot of the year to, to just build that strength, build that consistency, build that fitness, Absolutely. just get a real nice solid foundation. And then we'll start gradually from like a 12, roughly 12 or 16 week period um, when everything's right, when we're getting some ticks in, in the training department, we'll yep. really start to focus on extending the long runs and chucking a few yep. tempo and threshold sessions to to really complement the, the kind of uh, the kind of performance that it is that you're looking for. But another thing that I like to do, which um, you know we'll, we'll have to chat about in the future, is start to plan a couple of lead up races because I don't know about you, Beautiful. but for me, when I can race, 
the idea of getting out there and doing some distance, especially when you're training for a marathon, going out and running a 10K or a half yep. marathon, it's nice to get comfortable running at a pace yep. which is faster than what – well, from, I've, set the, I've set myself the goal to get you running sub three, uh, whether or not that's in that – My like, goal first, now, yeah, yeah. And that's my goal. Whether or not that's I was in sitting that there thinking first marathon. Early, three, early threes, but when you said two goals, two, under, under three, I was like, all right, we're in. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I can't, I can't, I honestly can't see a, a genuine reason why you're not going to be able to do it with what you've told me about your training leading into your three hours 28. As I said, there's so many people who are going to hate you based on the fact you did such little training and or such unstructured training, yeah, unstructured, I should say. Yeah, I did plenty um, of Ks. Too many. Yeah, and, and 328. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I can't see a reason. It, and especially where you're at now, I think the most exciting part of the training is is where you're at because when you're fresh back into it, it's like, oh man, we can take some massive yeah. chunks off. And then yep. we'll, uh, and then still some uh, with a couple of a couple of marathons after that. So that's my goal for you. And yep. I reckon just getting the legs used to running ten k's half marathons at a bit quicker than that pace from time to time will uh, not only be good for the fitness, but also be good for the the headspace going into uh, going into sure. the big race days. Yeah, I've already um I've already mapped out a bunch of runs that I'd love to hit next year, and we can talk about that in more detail later. But there's a substantial list, so awesome. and they gradually build. So. Sweet. There's a couple of trail runs in there as well, a bit of variety and whatnot that I'd love to do. The trail yeah. running series around Melbourne is beautiful. I've run that yeah. one before, um, and they're magnificent. So they're definitely some leading runs I wouldn't mind getting getting into. Well, the beautiful thing with trail runs as well is you get the opportunity to run right up near the race distance that you want to run, yeah. and you get to do it on a nice soft surface with some good hills in there. So I'm yeah. a I'm a <laughs> huge fan of especially long, slower runs on the trails yeah, just because I've, I, I did a lot of my running up at – um. Uh, not Yarrabind. What am I trying to say? Yeah, how am I? Uh, Sherbrooke Forest. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sherbrooke Just Forest. Here, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, where are you based? I'm in Moorabark, so yeah. Moorabark, Just okay. the eastern suburbs, yeah. Just at the foot of Mount Dandenong, so. Oh, it's such a beautiful yeah. part of the world. And I used to do place. my long runs out there, and, and even if it was a long, easy run, it was always yeah. nasty because some of the hills <laughs> they threw out, yeah, but it was also soft underfoot, so it was like you could do yeah. two hours and it wasn't too hard on the joints. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I'm a real big fan of that kind of running. So, I mean, we're only at the start of our, our journey together. And as I said, this is a, a one of hopefully a few podcast episodes if, you're, uh, if you've got the time to do it because it'd be cool to, it'd be cool to post your progress and, um, yep. and hopefully inspire everyone listening to see what it is that you're capable of with a, with a few months of consistency up your sleeve. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to have a few people come along with a ride and, um, yeah, so, so how, see how we go. Keep me accountable and keep me to the, to the program instead of going off on my own little tangents. So. <laughs> yeah, no, be good. <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, thanks again for uh, making the time to to jump yeah, on at welcome. the uh, end of your week. No worries. All right, man. We'll leave you to it. I'll see you soon. Yeah, cheers, see you guys. later, everybody.